All right. Off screen, I picked up another heart container. So I now have six hearts. And I am now heading down to get the Book of Medora from the library. Oh, but first, yeah. This is one of the cool things about Link to the Past. One of the things I really like about it. You know, there's stuff hidden everywhere. It's not even necessarily important stuff. Like, rupees or, or hearts. I mean, for Pete's sakes, you can run into some trees and get apples, which counts as hearts. I mean... <laughs> I mean, that that's just... That's just really cool. You know, they did a lot with what they had available. I'm gonna go over here, get another heart piece. You know, I actually didn't figure out until a lot later in life that you didn't have to bomb every single crack. I, I never really understood until I was probably about 17 or 18 that uh, there were two types of cracks and walls. I mean, there are the, the small cracks, which you have to bomb, and then there are the big cracks, which you can just run into. And that's really convenient. Because, you know, especially early on in the game, bombs are kind of... Whoops. Bombs are kind of uh, hard to come by. These guys... Oops. Uh, ah, yeah, that's where I'm going. <laughs> I'm actually gonna grab uh, some rupees. There are a couple people around the world that uh, give, can give you 300 rupees at a time. And this is one of the locations at... Oh, no, oh right, this is... Yeah. No, that's farther down. You know, even though it's... Uh, even though I love this game and I've played it pretty much hundreds of times, it's so big in scope and scale that it's easy to forget stuff. I mean, I don't have a perfect memory. You know, as I play through this and I comment on it, I realize that there are a lot of, you know, bad guys. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of enemies that I really, oops that I really don't like in this game. And those, those little Moldorms, you know, when I was little I thought they were piggies. I don't know why. But those little Moldorms just... You know, you got the, the green dancing dildos, you got the Moldorms, you got the red skeletons, and... There are a lot of really annoying enemies in this game. I'm gonna need a lot of rupees. I need at least 500 rupees after I beat the second dungeon, so that I can. Oh yeah, let's get a let's get a heart piece in here. You need 500 rupees after you beat the second dungeon in order to get the flippers, which are a critical item. And let's see. I actually figured out a while ago. That, let's see, you need 110 rupees in the dark world. You need 500 rupees in the light world. I don't think there's anything else you absolutely have to buy in order to beat the game. So yeah, you can beat the game stocking up only 610 rupees. Ooh, oops. 610 rupees. It's not easy and it's certainly not recommended. I mean, that means you'll end the game with just the Master Sword. And, uh... You can get, you can get the Red Armor without spending any Rupees. Because the Blue Armor and the Red Armor are both dungeon treasures. But you have to pay 10, 10 Rupees. Why did I almost say 10 Coins? I've been playing Mario too much recently. You can... You have to spend 10 coins... I did it again! You have to spend 10 rupees in order to upgrade your, uh... Your Master Sword into the Tempered Sword. 
and uh, oops. Yeah. Yeah, you can get by with just ever picking up 610 rupees, but that means you miss out on stuff like getting the bomb and arrow upgrades, uh, getting a sword upgrade. And the bomb and arrow thing is really, really convenient. Because you can get up to 50 bombs and 70 arrows. Oh no! No, you also have to spend... You have to spend 710 rupees because you have to spend $100 in the Dark World to get the super bomb. And... Which you need in order to uh, get the silver arrows. In order to, to beat Ganon. So yeah, you can get through the game with 710. Of course, since you can throw your sword into the, uh... Actually, you know what? I've never found out if you can throw your Master Sword into the, into the Wishing Well in the, in Ganon's Pyramid and have it come out as the level 4 sword. I've only ever done that with the level 3. I wonder. Huh. Anyway. <laughs> this is actually a really unusual dungeon. Um, every other dungeon in the game is... I would say it, they direct you a lot more. This dungeon is surprisingly open. Like, just wide open spaces. They're, they're... I mean, that first room is huge. And most of the other rooms are fairly large in comparison. Large and empty, as a matter of fact. There's a lot of free space to move in. There are only a couple rooms that are small on the... You know, like... Oh, pardon me. Like the rest of the dungeons are. I mean, look at that. I entered a, I entered a single room to get the key that I needed to get the big key. Now I'm gonna go get the uh, the power glove. I think it's a power glove. Huh. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go get the power glove. Then I'm gonna go beat the boss. I mean, I know that the dungeons of the light world are supposed to be a lot easier than the dungeons in the dark world. But the crazy speed at which you can knock these off is... <laughs> I mean, I think I've timed myself. My record on this dungeon is under four minutes. And that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. I mean, I know there are speedrunners who can do some crazy stuff, but... I've never been a oops. I've never been a huge fan of beating a game through glitches or bypassing stuff. Hmm. I don't know why I'm yawning. Actually, yes, I do. I was up way too late last night. You know, as a point of fact, for years I wondered why. It, uh, just gotta get the key. Oh, that's right. The first one's on the bottom left. You know, for, for years I wondered why Link had to wear a glove, obviously a magical glove, in order to lift rocks. And then I thought about it in, in terms of scale. I mean, look at Link, and look at one of those little rocks. I mean, the big rocks, obviously, but the little rocks are... They appear to be as wide as he is tall. Now, if that was me, that would be a rock that's nearly six foot... Okay, I lie. That's five foot seven <laughs> in width. And, you know... Judging by the fact that it's about a third to a half as tall, as stuck out of the ground, as Link is tall. You know, I'll be, I'll be easy on the math and just say it's a third, it sticks out a third of 
Link's height out of the ground. I mean, regardless of what kind of stone that is, that is going to be one crazy heavy rock to lift. I mean, and when you take into account the big stones, the ones that are like four times the size of that, I don't know, it's just, it's a weird thought, and here we go on the boss, it, it, I don't know. Ugh, you know what? Forget it. Blast these buggers apart with the... There we go. It is actually a lot easier, well, it's a lot quicker anyway, to shoot the... Uh, what are these guys called? Lamnolus. That's right. It's a lot e It's a lot quicker to shoot these guys with the bow and arrow, which actually does more damage than even your uh, charged sword. Missed. You know what? Screw it. There we go. Anyway, the arrow does... <laughs> I want to say it does as much as the Master Sword, but I'm not sure on that, but I know it does a lot more than the regular, there we go, than the regular sword. And let's see if I can get it again, and yes, got it. That's just uh, a pointless little glitch, but it's fun to do. doing push-ups. Oops. Wow, I'm really... I'm young really bad. Now that, the guy in that bottom rock, who's under the bottom rock, will give you rupees, but I have 900... And, oh, holy crap, I have 916 rupees. I didn't even think about that. I don't need any more right now. Alright, so that's going to just about do it for this episode. And uh, I will see you next time.